Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you've been following along with my build on Project Dale, you will know that when I lowered the rear suspension, I accidentally knit a brake line. So in this video, I'm going to show you the proper way and my technique to bending up some brake lines. So stay tuned. So even though I told you these were my techniques, there may be better ways or other ways, but I'm going to show you how I do it and the tools that I use to do this as well. They're just standard flaring tools, which you're going to have to know how to flare a brake line. And on this old truck, this 1977, uh, the brake parts are readily available and you can make these lines up all by yourself. Now there are companies out there that you can buy pre-made brake lines and have them ship right direct to your door and it's just a matter of unscrewing the old one and putting the new one in. On Project Dale here, I don't think we'll have any problem getting those nuts out. They look like they're not very rusty. And it's the same thing here in the wheel cylinder. So we're going to get this brake line off over onto the bench so we can make it easier to start bending them up and then we'll show you how we do it. But before we get that brake line off that's already on there, I'm going to show you how to make that flare so that it goes in and fits up against the fitting, screwed in tight, nothing leaks. So let me show you how I do it. So this is your brake fitting. And when properly installed and properly flared, there is an inverted spot on the inside of that connection over there that this fits into and makes a seal. It's almost like a cone that goes in there and when you tighten this up it makes a compression type fitting and therefore nothing leaks. So you don't really need any gaskets or anything like that or washers when you're using brake lines. It just seals itself because it's under high pressure. So I'm going to show you how to do this double flare and uh, the tools that we use to make it happen. So the very first thing that we've got to do is we've got to make sure that we're using the proper size on this little holder here and we're using 3 16 line so basically all you're going to do is shove your 3 16 line through there and then you're going to start tightening up this so that it holds it into place the thing is your 3 16 little flaring nut here or whatever you want to call it has to be measured if you can see it on there there's a little bit of a flange there we go. There's a little bit of a flange on the end. That's kind of your depth gauge to know how much of that line you need to have sticking up out of the holder tool. So once you've got that set up in place just like so, then you can continue tightening up the tool so it holds it in place. You're then going to take the little nipple on the end and you're going to Stick it down inside the hole in the brake line and then we take our flaring tool, we'll fit it into the little spot right there on the top and tighten it down till you can't tighten it anymore. That is your first flare, so let's do that. So we remove the little flaring tool and then we take the cone shaped device on this piece and put it into the same hole that's existing right there and we spin it down one more time and that creates our second flare. And there we have our second flare. So all I've done was I've done this end just to show you guys how it's done. So now we've got to see if we can get that brake line off with no issues and then we can start bending up our new one. Now I know I spoke too soon when I said these should come off very easily. They are not budging. I did spray some penetrating fluid down on there and uh, on both sides so we're going to have to work away at this and hopefully we don't have to break anything uh, to get it off. But let's see what we can do. So after some wiggling with the vice grips on there we were able to get that nut loose. So we're going to go over to the wheel cylinder see if we can do the same thing. So now there is a pretty good example of what happens when brake lines are original and have never been taken off since it was new after 43 years. We've got that out, that's not leaking 
and we've got all the clips that hold the brake line into place. So now we can kind of snake this out through and now we've got the brake line in our hand. Let's go over to the bench and then we can start bending up this new one. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways that you can bend uh, copper tubing or in this case it's the nickel copper and the easiest way a lot of people are going to want to use their thumbs and, and give it a little bend and a tweak which if you're experienced and you know how to do that that's one thing but if you're inexperienced and you don't know what you're doing when it comes to doing brake lines there's a couple of things that you can do and one of them is this brake line bending tool and basically what you do is you would put your straight line in here you give it a squeeze and these are grooved to help you bend that without kinking the tubing which is exactly what I did to make these right angles. When you put this in here like so and you give it a squeeze it does this perfect little bend you could go as far as you want. You don't want to go too much further than a 90 degree simply because you do run the risk of kinking it. So this is our old one and this is our new one and basically what I'm trying to do is get the same rough angle that I can get to get that in I left this a little bit long so I can shorten it as needed and still have room to put my tools on there and get this thing flared on one end so all we're trying to do now is get the basic shape of what we need and we can fine tune it once we get it on there now when I first started this was two right angles. This is bent because I was manipulating it trying to get it off the fitting. So we're going to kind of follow it along and in some places we're actually going to use our hands but with some of these sharp bends we're going to use this tool. The other thing that you can use when bending is if you've got a nice big piece of pipe that you can wrap that around then you can use this to pull on either side and that will give you a curve you got to be careful, but you can still get that bend that you need without kinking the tube. I'm going to get this bent up, and it's going to take a little bit of time, but we'll play some music for you guys while I do this. Okay, so now that we've got the basic shape, we'll go back to the back of the truck and we'll get it mounted up and see what it looks like. So I think we've got the basic shape down pat. We can pull this back a little bit to get that flare nut on there and it comes down. It'll hook into the uh, little clip here. There's also a little clip underneath there by the bump stop and one more right here that once I get the end trimmed off that will sit up in as well. You can see that my bends around the shackle here did okay so we'll get this one bent up so that we can get it into the wheel cylinder here so we'll finish that up okay guys welcome back to the channel my name is Grant Tommy and uh, this is straight six fan I seem to have run into a problem with the brake lines on project Dale when I picked up this fitting I made sure that that fitting and the one that I took out of the vehicle threaded into the same coupler because I had to make a trip into the shop because those weren't threading into either the uh, brake hose over here or to the wheel cylinder over here. So I thought maybe I had the wrong fitting. Took a trip out to the shop with this and made sure that this threaded into the same fitting that these ones did. So they did. I brought them back, got the line all made up, got everything all flared. That line or that fitting went into the brake hose very, very hard. This one, I can only get two or three turns on it and it fetches up. It's pretty well as tight as I can get it there right now. And that line still moves in and out quite significantly. So I'm not sure what's going on, but this fitting that came out of it 
thread it into the same fitting that that did, so why shouldn't it go into the wheel cylinder or the brake hose? I'm not quite sure why, but uh, I am a little bit beyond frustrated tonight, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it quits for right now, and we'll have to come back to this once I regroup and figure out what the heck is going on uh, with these fittings. I'm going to get a second opinion too. I'm going to get the old man out here or Tim and uh, see what they think. And uh, again, I'm not really sure what it is, but uh, when we get it figured out, I'll come back and tell you. All right, guys, so it's the next night and we figured out what was going on with the fittings on the brake line. And I guess I just simply had the wrong ones. Went to the shop today and what we had that were labeled in the bin weren't the right ones so I called ordered some in got those and we finally were able to get those lines put back in let me show you so we've got our fitting here all tightened up no nothing's loose same thing over here it's all in and junior came out a little while ago and helped me bleed the brakes so those are done while we were out here we managed to clean up a few other little things that we can cross off that list. The vent tube for the differential, we've got that re-roaded. It doesn't have to be very high. I mean, the truck sat, sits a little bit lower than it did before. So I just kind of rerouted it around the back of the differential. The uh, brake line that goes across the pasture side, we've got that bolted back in here and everything is back into place. I got this piece of trim back on, this piece of trim back on, and the fender trim on both sides are reinstalled on the truck. So we can cross off the brake line, the vent tube, and fasten the brake line there. Tight springs, blah, blah, blah. Fender trim. And everything else is stuff that we're going to do later on. So what I've got to do is I've got to get this hole in the floor patched up. Once I get that done, I can put our new floor covering from ACC, which came with the truck when I bought it. It's just a vinyl floor. Then we'll get the seat back in. We can put the doors back on and we'll be even closer to finishing up on Project Dale as far as, you know, the whole look of the truck. Then we'll be able to get the box back on, get the wires and taillights hooked back up and pretty much call it quits. The only thing that I've got to do with this truck as far as the body goes is the tailgate. The tailgate that came on the truck was rusty on the bottom. A buddy of mine, I swapped him out for the new step bumper that came on the truck for a good tailgate to match. The problem is it's red. So I'm gonna have to scuff that up, prime it, paint it to match the truck and get that put back on. I'll probably again do that out at the shop where I've got some room and I got the paint gun. I can't, I don't want to spray that big of an area with a uh, spray bomb. So once we get that done, that'll be the weekend project I think is getting the uh, floor in, the seats on, getting the floor down, the seats in and the doors on and then uh, we'll be able to put that box on. I'll gather up some guys. Hopefully it's not snowing too bad. We're calling for six to eight inches of snow this weekend and uh, we'll be able to uh, hopefully put that together before the snow comes. Anyway, also a lot of you guys have been mentioning about the back of the cab. Make sure I clean it. Of course I'm going to clean it. That and the front of the uh, uh, box as well. I'll make sure that I get that done before I put it all together. Don't worry guys, I know what I'm doing. I pay attention to those details too. So thanks for picking up on it though in the comments. So very quickly, Car Guy and Six Fan Show with the Legacy episode coming up on Thursday evening on my channel. 7 o'clock Central, 8 Eastern, Grant, Tommy and I, we talk about cars and we help other small YouTube channels succeed uh, in some of the ways that have worked for us. T-shirts, hoodies, swag, old car, auto guy, you can get your very own in the first link in the description box below. I hope you go over there, check out what we have to offer and maybe buy something because the profits from that help go towards the builds like this. The poll on my Instagram and Facebook as well as the YouTube community page, uh, I asked you what we should be doing about the engine for Project Dale. Very close in numbers to a LS swap and a mild build on this engine here. So I think uh, at the end of the day, budget wise, dollar for power, uh, building this 350 
is what we're going to do. I made a phone call today about a 700R4 transmission that uh, might be available. We uh, will hopefully have some information on that in the next video. Stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror, guys. I love you. God bless. We'll see you in the next one.